Hi, what's good everyone? Alexander here from Orchestry. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a knowledge base using Viva Engage and a SharePoint site. Now, the first thing you'll need are stakeholders, people in a leadership position that will support you and this project throughout its entire duration. Your stakeholders will also play a part in helping you recruit champions to manage the knowledge base. I'm talking about the day to day stuff ensuring content is up to date, responding to questions. And to the last point, you're going to want to attract some subject matter experts to help answer questions. Now that you have your stakeholders, champions, and subject matter experts, now we can talk about creating the community and the Microsoft 365 group. Now as an IT admin, the first thing to do is to go into Viva Engage and then go into the administrator settings. Now, if you click on security settings, scroll down until you see two sections, Office 365 Identity Enforcement and Office 365 Connected Viva Engage Groups. One, make sure you're enforcing Office 365 or Microsoft 365 identities. So anyone that joins your group has to have a license. And two, make sure the section Office 365 Connected Viva Engage Groups is set to enabled. In order for the status to be enabled, you must enforce Office 365 identity first. Once everything's configured, you can create your first community. From Viva Engage, click on Communities, and then select Create a Community. You can call it whatever you want, but remember that whatever you call it is going to be the name of your Microsoft 365 group. Now, as the person creating this group, you're going to be the default owner. From here, you can invite members, but we're going to make this a public group. So even if you don't invite anyone, people can still discover and participate in the community. So make sure your settings are set to public. And then when you're ready, click Create. Now, within a few moments, your Microsoft 365 group, the community, the SharePoint site, and everything else that it comes with will be provisioned. Now, the next thing to do is invite our champions as group owners. Again, they're going to be responsible for managing everything in the community and the SharePoint site. So you're going to want to have two to three champions that can support each other as a team. So I'm going to start off by inviting Cassie as my other owner. In order to make them an owner, assign them as an admin. If you have subject matter experts, you can go ahead and invite them as community members. Everyone else will be in the visitor bucket by default, so they can come to this community, participate without actually joining the group. Now, there's a couple of things we're going to do here to set up this SharePoint site. One, we're going to create a custom document library that's going to house all of our knowledge base resources, any documentation, videos, anything submitted by your champions or SMEs will go in this document library. The reason to have a custom document library on this site is to ensure that only your champions and your subject matter experts can edit content. Everyone else will have read only permission. Now I've already set up a SharePoint site, so I'm going to walk you through this one. If you've never set up your own document library before, it's really easy. You can click the new button and select document library. So this is my custom document library. I've called knowledge base resources. And you can see that's separate from the one that comes with the site. I'll talk about that in a moment. There's a couple of things I want you to notice. One, I've got custom fields, owning department and audience. These are just a couple of examples that you and your end users can use to organize the files that are uploaded here. So for example, if I want to know everything that's owned by the finance team or HR, I can group everything by owning department. If I want to organize content and maybe create a custom view for content that's targeted to all staff members or a specific department or only managers, I can group them by that resource, maybe apply a filter and then create a custom view for that as well. So again, these are just a couple of examples of how you can configure your own document library. Now, if you've never created a document library before and you've never customized the permissions, I'll show you how to do that here. First, create a new document library. Make sure to add this library to your site navigation so people can find it. Now, to customize permissions for this library, what we're going to do is go into library settings. So click on the gear icon, click library settings. 
and then click more library settings. From here, if you're a site owner, you should be able to see this middle column called permissions and management. Look for permissions for this document library. Now there's a couple of things we need to do on this page. First, we're going to stop inheriting permissions. What this means is that you'll have to manually manage access to this document library moving forward. So now that we've broken inheritor permissions, we're going to do two things. Now first, we're going to modify permissions for the members. Now we're going to change this from edit to read. We only want people with member permissions to be able to read in this document library. Why? Because anyone in your organization, when they join the community, they become members, kind of like joining a team in Microsoft Teams. Now, if that was the case, they get instant edit permissions to this custom document library, and we don't want that. So we're taking that away by changing member permission from edit to read only. Go ahead and click OK, and that change is set up. So if someone joins the community, they will only have read access to this document library moving forward. Now your owners, they still have full control as part of this knowledge base owners group. So you don't have to make any changes there. Anyone that hasn't joined the group or the community will still have read access. Now, what about your subject matter experts? How do they become editors? This is where you're going to have to manually add them in. So from here, click grant permissions and start inviting people. Now, before you hit share, make sure you send them an email invitation and make sure you check their permissions. They should just have edit permissions. That's all they need in this case, because you want them to be contributors to the document library. Go ahead and hit share and then you're done here. So now our document library permissions are set up. If you have new subject matter experts join the organization, you'll have to add them in. Once they no longer need access or they've left the company, take them out, remove their access. The next bit of customization I recommend you do is for the page library of your site. So go into site contents, click on page library or site pages. And in this one, you can see that I already have a custom field set up. This one is owning department. So let's say a subject matter expert comes in and creates a registration page for some training. That page is owned by whatever department that subject matter expert comes from, IT, HR, doesn't matter. But in order for us to track that, to keep track of what pages are owned by another department and which ones are owned by the site owners, we can use custom fields. So in here, I've got that owning department field doing just that. So as a site owner, it makes it really easy for me to tell which ones are owned by someone else and which ones aren't. To take this a step further, let's look at page templates. Now page templates can help streamline the process of creating new knowledge base articles or event pages. Whatever people need to create on a regular basis, news, events, new knowledge base articles, I encourage you to create a template for them. Now, of course, I've got a couple on the site sub, so let's take a look. So I'm gonna click new, page, and then under saved on this site, I've got two of them here. One called knowledge base article. So if someone just needs to write a generic article in the knowledge base, they can use this page template. They're still customizable, but this gives people a place to start. Now, another example I have here is an IT article template. And this assumes that this department has a lot of content to post on a regular basis, so they're gonna use their own template. So let's use the IT template and click create page. Now, a couple of things I'm going to show you about this template is one, I've got a section here for text ready to go. I've embedded the conversations web part in here so people can ask questions directly to the community without leaving the page, without leaving the site. This can be really helpful if someone's reading an article in your knowledge base, doesn't understand something or isn't finding what they're looking for, they can come here and ask. And that's what we want people to do. Find gaps in our knowledge base so we can improve it over time. Now, the last thing I want to show you about this template is the fact that I have under page details, the owning department field filled out automatically. Once again, this helps your site owners keep track of what pages are owned by who. So putting that in the templates themselves will save you a lot of time and frustration down the road. Now let's talk about the document library that comes with your team site. Just like with team sites that are connected to team channels, this document library is connected to the Viva Engage community. Now, anytime someone comes to your community and uploads a file here, it's going to be automatically uploaded to this document library. And what Microsoft does is they create a couple of folders here, one called apps, and then inside of there is Viva Engage. And that's where you're going to find the files uploaded to the community. Now, because this document library is connected to the community, I've opted to leave the permissions alone. If something good is uploaded that should be saved, 
take it from here and move it to the other document library or move a copy. But this ultimately becomes a dumping ground for files that were uploaded for the community. Refer to your own policies to determine how long content should live here for before it's deleted permanently. Now, the last thing you should need to do on the site is set up the home page. Now, I've done a bunch of different things here to configure my own home page. Like I've got the navigation on the top. I've got links to other pages. And you've probably noticed a theme where I've added the conversations web part to bring discussions and posts from the community directly onto the SharePoint site. This web part is configured to show any posts with the topic KB news and updates. We're going to talk about Viva Engage topics in a little bit, but I just want you to take away that this is a great way to bring current news and updates from the community onto the site. Viva Engage allows you to bring the information to where people are instead of forcing them to go into the app. At the end of the day, use your homepage to help people find what they're looking for as easily as possible. So now that we've got the site set up, let's talk about a couple of things you can do to set up the community itself. Now, a couple of things you can do off the bat is one, add a cover photo, add an icon, and add a description for the community. Tell people what this is for and why they should care. Below here, you'll notice that I have ask a question as the default type. In order to do that as a site administrator or an owner, go into your community settings and choose question as the default publish type. People can still leverage discussions, praise and polls all they want. What we're doing is assuming that people are coming here to ask a question first. On the right hand side below that information panel, add some pinned links. For example, make sure your knowledge base library is added here so people can find it. If you've created an FAQ page, add it here as well. Any links that people are always looking for or access very often should be a pinned link so people can find it as quickly and easily as possible. And the last thing to do with your knowledge base community is add topics. Now this post has a topic called KB news and updates to add a topic or modify topics. Click on the three dots of a post and then choose edit topics. From here, you can create new topics or you can modify the ones that are already there. So if I wanted to add a new one, I always add a prefix to a new topic that represents the community name. So in this case, it's KB. Now you can see I've got a number of topics already here, news and updates, some department ones, onboarding, events. We can choose any of these to help people find what they're looking for. So maybe I'll mark this one as onboarding too. Or you can create a new topic. So if you click new topic, give it a name. I use a prefix on my topic names so I know which topics are exclusive to a specific community. So if your organization has multiple Viva Engage communities, you might want to explore using prefixes as well. Organizing posts with topics has a lot of advantages. For example, if I click on this topic, it takes me to a page where I can see all posts, all conversations that leverage it. And I can follow the topic so I can get notified through email, through Teams, whenever someone posts using this topic. It's a great feature to have. This is one you should teach your subject matter experts. So if you have a subject matter expert for a specific department, make sure they're following that topic so they'll get notified every time someone uses it. Now on the homepage of the knowledge base SharePoint site, I have the conversations web part configured to look for the topic news and updates. So anytime I post to the community and use that topic, it'll always appear at the top here. This web part allows our site visitors to come and see the latest news and engage with it as well by reacting or leaving a comment below. Now you've got your team, you've got your knowledge base site with all its content, and you've got the community for engaging with staff. The last thing you need to do is promote the knowledge base regularly. A couple of things you can do is install Viva Engage in Microsoft Teams for your users or teach them how to do it themselves by installing the app from the store. You can also teach your users to add the knowledge base, the site and the community as channel tabs in Microsoft Teams. If you have a SharePoint hub, make sure that knowledge base site is added to it. If you have a home site, make sure there's a link to the knowledge base and add that community web part to that home page as well so people can see the latest and greatest. Now you can also leverage SharePoint news from that team site. That's great for long form content Anything that is not a quick update or anything that is not a good fit for an update in the community should be posted to SharePoint News. Now, a knowledge base is always growing and improving over time. Encourage your users to become contributors. If they find holes, if they have a lot of questions, 
ask them to become contributors and help improve what you've started. And lastly, make sure you teach your users how to follow those topics. It's a really powerful tool that helps them stay engaged with the content they care about the most. All right, that's it for this video. If you want to learn more about how I set up this knowledge base, check out my blog post on the Orchestry website. Thanks for watching. Take care.